Hey there, welcome back to the uh, Chrysler E904 valve body series. It's gonna be part two. We're gonna reassemble the main valve body and then do what we can to test it on the Sonics back test machine. Uh, for context, if you didn't watch part one of this or the teardown video, um, all three are from the same transmission. It's a, a 2002 A904 out of a Jeep Wrangler that came in with a massive catastrophic torque converter failure. And it sent, you know, ground up shrapnel throughout the entire transmission. Um, taking out numerous hard parts, including the pump, uh, the you know, front ring gear, rear planet, uh, the rear uh, reverse drum, that was no good, heavily scored up. Uh, even the direct clutch piston was scored to the extent that I had to put another one in there. So overall, it was a catastrophic failure, um, and that transmission had only 4,000 miles on it, and uh, you know, previous owner had it installed into his vehicle prior to my customer purchasing uh, the vehicle. Uh, customer only had it for four months. Uh, anyway, I have all the valve trains laid out as they need to go in. Uh, I think at the end of the part one, the teardown, they, they're somewhere like disoriented, but uh, uh, they're laid out as they need to go right now. So I'll just cover them real quick. You have your four spool switch valve here, main pressure regulator valve and spring and spring stop, along with your uh, throttle pressure adjustment screw and um, retention bracket. And then you have your um, PR throttle valve and spring and little sleeve and plug. And then from there you have your kick down and main throttle valve, uh, the sleeve and the spring. This is going to be your 1-2 uh, control valve and spring, uh, your 1-2 shift valve. This is going to be the shuttle valve and end plug. This is your 1-2 governor plug. And then you have your 2-3 valve train. This is going to be the spring, the 2-3 shift valve, and the governor plug. All right. And then over here you're going to have your limit valve, your plug, and the housing. So. Uh, and up here you have your uh, lockup module, so you're going to have your lockup valve and your safety valve. I think that's what it's called. All right, you'll notice little white dots on these um, end plate covers. I just indexed them, so I'm not fiddling around with it when I go back together. Just visually, it makes it nice and easy. All right, uh, I want to go ahead and use Bench Buddies and polish out each of the bores in the valve body using it and WD-40 along with my drill so that I can smooth out any rough edges and then assemble it just as it is to see how viable or not it is. Um, I've been speculating that uh, I would not uh, trust this valve body, that it's no good, that I would condemn it. We did install central valve bodies assembly onto this transmission, which actually is sitting on the other end of the bench. There it is. So uh, that transmission's all done. It's ready to go back to the customer. So now what we're doing is assessing the viability of the erstwhile core to see if it's something I want to keep and maybe rehabilitate or if it's something that I'm just going to say, nah, I'm done with it. Let central valve bodies deal with it and I'll get my $100 core charge back. All right, uh, let me go ahead and get my WD-40 and then we'll begin the assembly process and then from there we'll test everything and see what we find out. All right, I assemble all my valve bodies with WD-40. You could use transmission fluid as well. Uh, central valve bodies, they use some sort of other um, fluid that they use because they dyno test all their assemblies before they go out the door. So I'm not exactly sure what that fluid is or you know where you can even get it. Maybe it's some sort of like custom blend, I have no idea. But it does have a distinctive smell. That's, <laughs> that's all I'll say about it. All right, let me get these other housings. All right, when it comes to bench buddies, you really don't need to spend a ton of time in each bore. Uh, I'll spend maybe 10 to 15 seconds in each one going you know front to back front to back and that's basically it um, it's not really rocket science per se but these things are great especially if you have valves that are dragging or hanging up a little bit uh, this will straighten those bores out and in combination with some real fine grit sandpaper maybe 600 and then progress to 800 and then 1500 on steel valves don't do this on aluminum anodized valves but on steel valves that can improve the situation um, pretty dramatically and 
rehabilitate a given bore and valve so that it's usable again and won't get stuck or hang up. Because that's what usually the problem is. You know, you go back together with a valve body and the bores are hanging up uh, the valves because there's, you know, tiny little mini or micro abrasions or scoring or whatever that's kind of preventing that valve from, <clears throat> you know, cleanly and smoothly uh, traveling its fullest extent in the bore when it's, you know, on the road and working. All right, like I said, short strokes, nothing crazy. Alright, I just happen to be going from largest diameter to smallest diameter, but you know, you can do this however you want. I mean, with this valve body in particular, there's really nothing to lose by doing this. Um, if you can straighten it out, that's great. You know, you saved it and you might be able to use it again. Okay, I'm satisfied that these things are probably ready to go uh, and receive their valve trains. So, lube everything else up. If I can get everything in the shop here. And WD-40 is a um, you know great uh, cleaning agent as well. It'll wash out any grit as long as you put enough in the bore. So no need to be shy with it. You know, use a generous amount.
There's going to be some hazards associated with wearing gloves when dealing with these valve bodies or any valve body. You know, so I guess a risk I accept, but getting your gloves snagged and caught up, I mean, that's a common problem. All right, so for your lockup module, is your lockup valve spring is outboard, and then your safety valve, the spring is inboard. So the spring tension on these things is no joke. 35 inch pounds on all valve body bolts. Okay, I'm just using a very low setting on this impact. Zero chance of me stripping threads out. And then I'm just looking for access for this valve. I don't think I have it. But, oh. All right, so that's the lockup module. And we have our limit valve and plug. And that is actually gonna go on this side. And you're basically gonna have through bolts. Just like that. And then you have your plate. I'll go on like that. All right, so this is going to be your one, two control valve, your one, two shift valve. Just put the valve in itself. No need to put the spring in just yet. And then you're going to have your two, three valve. going to face out okay what I'm you know kind of looking for as I'm putting these valves in is any drag so far I don't feel any Now we're just gonna go ahead and install our limit valve housing. Like I said, spring tension will fight you. want to make sure that you're fully threaded all three bolts before you cinch everything down with an impact. Oh, 
shuttle valve. Then your spring seat. Then your spring. And then your other spring seat. All right, you can leave it like that for now. And go ahead and put your plug in your inboard spring. One, two, shift. So there's your spring, and then your one, two, governor plug. And then two, three, governor plug. Cover plate and your five bolts. All right, now you can wrestle with the uh, shuttle valve and its little E-clip, which I can't stand these things. They are a pain in the ass. All right, so let's see if I can do this on camera. So I need to stick a screwdriver in there to hold back the valve so I can expose so I can expose the groove for the E-clip. I hope my head didn't get in the way. All right. We're getting there. All right, we have everything chucked up in the vise. So I actually had the uh, sleeve for the throttle valve installed and correctly in an incorrect orientation. So this is actually the inboard side that faces the spring. And it goes in here just like that. Okay, here's your spring for your four spool switch valve and your PR spring. And then you want to make sure that your spring stop for your PR valve is such that the Allen key side's facing out. All right, and then all you're going to do is line up your stud for your uh, uh, switch valve spring and the um, opening for the PR adjustment screw. And then just simply collapse them until you can install this top short bolt and get it started. All right, make sure you can move this one, um, or I should say the bracket a little bit so you can get this bolt in and threaded. And then just cinch them both down. And you won't need the, the longest bolt until you're ready to put the whole assembly back together after testing and whatnot. Okay, back to the bench. Okay, the last step we need to take is install our cover plate. You 
You got six total bolts. All right, everything is more or less ready for testing and evaluation. All right, we're here at the vacuum testing station, so I'm going to attempt to test this valve body uh, with the uh, Sonics vac test equipment. Now, Sonics does not publish a guide for vacuum testing these 727-904 valve bodies, so I'm going to use the uh, four speed back test guide as a rough proxy and you know based on the instructions here for the 46 47 RE RHs um, try to get some testing done and draw some conclusions about it so before you do any testing with this machine and if you watch any of my other back test videos uh, you know this is going to be a rerun so to speak but if you're new to either my videos or to the machine itself um, it's critically important that you calibrate these machines each and every time you use them because even if you use them regularly after two or three go rounds um, you'll find that the calibration will drift a little bit and so your results won't be valid or as valid as they uh, could or should be. So calibration is very simple. All you're going to do is take your test hose and you're going to plug it or I should say stick it into the calibration receptacle on the machine right there. Then you're going to turn the machine on and you want to see a steady five inches of lift on the gauge. So um, once you see that, what you're going to do is you're going to look over here on the side of the machine. You're going to see a little uh, orifice. That's your calibration port. All you're going to do is put a finger over that port and vacuum will jump up to somewhere between 20 and 30, somewhere in the neighborhood. And then you want to see it um, we had a steady 25 inches of lift. So here's how you make your adjustments. To get to 5 inches of lift, you're going to adjust the pump valve. So counterclockwise raises vacuum, clockwise lowers the vacuum. For your um, high side, you're going to adjust your bleeder valve and it's quite the opposite. So this will raise it, this will lower it. Pretty simple, um, but it's something you always have to do. So we'll turn the machine on. All right, I'm seeing just shy of five inches, ever so slightly more on the gauge, no problem. So we're gonna turn this clockwise ever so slightly until we have a steady five inches. Then we're gonna take a finger and we're gonna plug the calibration port and see if we have 25 inches. All right, looks like we do. So we should go right back to five inches. Okay, calibration's done, that's it. That's all there is to it, but like I said, it's essential if you wanna have valid results. Okay, so here's what we're gonna test. I'm gonna test the four spool switch valve, the pressure regulator valve, the downshift or kick down valve, and where I can test the uh, one, two, and the two, three bore plugs, and the two, three shift valve. Now, these four speeds have a lower valve body, and that lower valve body has, um, you know, three, four quick fill and timing valves, along with the um, TCC apply and timing valves, which these transmissions obviously don't have. So our testing is going to be limited. I'm going to try to see if I could test the lockup module. I don't know. Um, you know, I've never actually tested one of these before, so it'll be interesting to see what we can learn, if anything, about the valve body's condition with this uh, vac test equipment. Um, we know that this valve body has seen an immense amount of contamination, so we did what we could to kind of recondition the bores to the extent possible with bench buddies and WD-40, and when we assembled the valve body, um, 
I didn't note any kind of dragging or any valves hanging up. Everything seemed to go in as they should. So it's possible that this valve body um, is salvageable. Uh, you know, when I first started uh, you know, the video series, you know, with the disassembly, I mean, and frankly, even the disassembly of the transmission itself, I figured, now this valve body is a write-off. But maybe it could be salvageable. I mean, Sonics has a zip kit that has plenty of valves and other corrective parts, including um, scarf-cut ceiling ring-equipped uh, governor plugs that could possibly restore, um, you know, that area of the valve body. Uh, full uh, lube regulated pressure valve along, or pressure regulated valve, excuse me, along with, um, you know, a pressure um, boost valve or line pressure valve and plug. Uh, it has a forceful switch valve, which I believe is already in here, but it's kind of messed up. So if I were to try to use this, I would install another one. Um, it has, I believe, a uh, kick down valve and sleeve. Transgo has a manual valve, as does Sonics, and as does central valve bodies. And there's a couple other things that off the top of my head I can't remember. But it's a pretty comprehensive kit for these. Um, works on the 904s and 727. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get to the testing. I'm going to start by testing this circuit up here, and then just going to move down. Um, and then for this circuit is actually part of the pressure regulator circuit, so I'm going to test there. Um, I'll conclude my testing of the switch, bool, uh, switch valve excuse me, uh, down here, and then I'll move to the pressure regulator valve and um, you know line pressure modulator valve or whatever it's called, and then close with testing the uh, plug, because that's what this circuit tests right here. Okay, for kick down, you basically test this entire series of circuits in one shot, and you can test this circuit here. I'm not sure about this one, but this one here. Um, I have a uh, Loctite fun tack on the bench. So I'm going to put a little bit of fun tack right there in this notch so I could seal off that circuit and test it. And then I will test these circuits here for the one, two, and then this circuit and this circuit for the two, three. And we'll see what we come up with. All right. This one's going to be a little tricky. In fact, uh, let me see here. Let me get, if I can get this in. Oop. What i got to do is kind of come in like this. All right, now I'm over it. I know that was real clumsy, but you know, access is limited. So I'm at 23 there. So now I'm gonna test this port here. All right, same 23 inches, that's solid. Next. I don't know if I'm gonna draw a vacuum on this port. I may not. No vacuum. Okay, I'm going to skip this cord here and test this one. And looks like 20, 22 and a half. Twenty one and a half. I think that last one was twenty one and a half as well. And no reading. No reading on the flask. I think I have to move the valve forward. I think. I don't know. Alright. That's just stuck. Okay. So this is not drawing vacuum for me at all. 
Alright, so now I'm going to see if I can get any vacuum signal at all here on the main pressure regulator valve. here like this. Alright, 21. Alright, now I'm actually, now I'm over it. The 21 was the uh, forceful switch valve. I'm over it now, it's giving me 5 inches. This looks like a factory pressure regulator valve to me. Alright, I'm going to try to test this cavity here. Now it's giving me six inches. I don't know that this is testable, so we'll skip to this first rectangular cutout. So that looks like uh, 17 and a half. That's good. Eighteen and a half, that's even better. It's like sixteen and a half. Sixteen and a half, that's this circuit right here. Alright, the uh, plug is giving me 22. And it looks like 22 and a half at the far end, right here. Alright, so I see a couple notches and I put uh, putty here and putty here. Try to test this port and see what happens. Or this circuit, rather. Okay, 20... Eh, 19... <laughs> 18... 17... It's like, uh, 16... It's like it's holding at 16. Yeah, I think what was happening is I had to squash this down to where it was fully sealing. Alright, now I'm going to test this entire cavity. Okay, that's holding steady at 18 or just shy of 18. Alright, next is going to be the C-shaped cavity. Uh, I guess that doesn't get tested. Not drawing vacuum. So, last I'll test this. Uh, this circuit right here. Alright, that's giving me 21 inches. Okay. I don't know to what extent you can actually test the manual valve. I mean, I'll try a couple of the couple of these cutouts and see what happens. But there's no instructions. Sonics doesn't indicate anything, so it might be that you can't test it.
where we can. I mean, it's not yielding much. Okay, there we go. 16 at this location here. It's like seven and a half, six and a half actually. Six and a half. All right, inboard spool is eight. Outboard spool is eight, rather. Inboard spool is six and a half. I'm going to conclude this manual valve is a little bit worn out. And like I said, all the kits have manual valves, so it's, you know, something that's, I would say, relatively common. I don't know to what extent we can test this uh, circuit right here. I'll try. Okay, it's not drawing a whole lot. Nothing. I think this circuit's testable in the 40 series transmissions. Uh, this is giving me five and a half inches. It might be that I have to plug this port here. I don't know. So I. 10 inches right here. And about the same right here. All right, last uh, circuits on the main valve body are gonna be here and here. Uh, it's pulling only four inches. So these are your governor plugs, if you will. Hey, that's not sealing well at all. Seven. So these two are for your two, three governor plug. All right, for the outboard spool, the 2 3 shift valve, 11 inches. Nothing. Nothing. I probably have to manipulate the valve. Okay, so that's vacuum testing. Uh, I didn't write any of the values down because like I said, I'm not entirely convinced that uh, you know this testing is gonna be as valid or as reliable as um, testing where Sonics provide you formal instructions. I mean, they spent God knows how many hundreds if not thousands of hours developing all the testing, all of the procedures, the literature, and you know, um, the technical guidance on <clears throat> using this machine on you know um, whatever valve bodies or hydraulic components that they have instructions for and the 727-904 family of transmissions um, are not among them at least that I could see so I don't know what I can learn other than maybe 
make some inferences about the bow body. I mean, I think some of the testing we did over here, here, and you know, some other places is in fact valid. It's given me um, legitimate results, but I don't know to what extent the um, uh, the results are like 100%. You can take it to the bank reliable. Um, let me throw this on the tester real quick. Um, this is going to be the lockup valve, and that's the safety valve. So let's see if these yield any results. So I'm going to just stick the tester here. That is going to be 20, 23 inches, a little over 23 inches. Interesting. Now, if shits and giggles, I'll try this circuit. Nothing. We'll try this cavity here. And nothing. Now I'll try this rectangular cut out, see if anything happens. And nothing. Okay. Um, I think what I'm going to do is hang on to this valve body, though. Uh, Sonics has, uh, in their zip kit, like I said, a uh, plethora of components, as well as does transgo and central valve bodies. So, um, I'll have to see exactly what parts are available, and also determine if it's worth doing, and worth taking the risk. Um, for the next 904. Now this is a late model. I don't know to what extent uh, very early model valve bodies are interchangeable with these. I would imagine not given, you know, uh, the fact that there's a lockup module. Um, and I believe these lockup modules have an additional vent uh, for the valves, um, you know, I should say for the assemblies that are associated with uh, converter clutch lockup transmissions. All right, as far as the fun tack is concerned, it's pretty easy to work with. I mean, it can be real sticky and, you know, kind of gooey, especially in the summertime when it's real hot. But for the most part, it comes off without too much of a fight, you know. Like I said, it can get real gooey in the summer, as you can see. So I'll just clean this up with a razor blade and, and get the rest of it off later. But, um, you know, that'll wrap the testing and then... Um, We'll proceed next to final assembly once that stuff is cleaned off. Alright, now we're ready to assemble this thing. <clears throat> so I'm just going to show you the process. I'm not going to torque any of these bolts because this thing's going to come back apart anyway. Uh, I've decided I'm just going to go ahead and keep this valve body. Uh, I am now strongly and firmly in the camp that this can be rehabilitated and reused again at some point in the future. So. Um, when I quote the customer, and I do this for all my builds, I quote, uh, when it comes to valve bodies, reman pumps, or anything with a core charge, I quote net of core. Uh, and what that allows me to do is decide if I want to keep the part and eat the core charge, or send it back and get the money back. Either way, the customer pays the um, just the net cost, um, as opposed to paying the cost plus the core charge. So it makes it easier. All right, a um, couple things real quick. One. Uh, if you have plate wear, especially right here at the check ball location, uh, you know, right here on the uh, channel plate, Sonics makes a uh, plate, um, a replacement plate. These are referred to as 86 plates. And the reason for that is you can see kind of the number 86, uh, you know, cut into the spacer plate. So if you have an 86 plate, then you can purchase a uh, replacement for it from Sonics if you want. All right, so we have our check balls. First thing you want to do is put them in the locations where they need to go in the channel plate. That's going to be here and right here. Right here and right here. Then go ahead and stick your plate on. And you have two very short screws. One is going to go here. And one is actually going to go right here. Uh, 
if I can get it to thread in. So what you need to know is that these two screws will align the plate with the rest of uh, the assembly so that when you go to bolt the main bow body on and your lockup body and your lockup solenoid, everything will line up for you. So do the best you can to get this perfect. Make sure all the bullhole locations are through and through and lined up as they need to be. Then cinch it down. Now the reason I say that is you will not have access to this bolt once the main valve body goes on. Okay, so now you have the check bolts captured. Let's double check, make sure everything is lined up. I want to make sure I have access to everything that I need access to. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and install all the other check bolts where they need to go. And battery's running low, so let me take care of that, and then we'll be right back. Okay, gonna start off with the big check ball. Stick that there. And then the rest of the check balls will go where they need to go in their respective bathtub locations. All right, now what you're gonna do is orient the valve body like so, such that you have unobstructed access and this bullhole location here is going to line up with this bullhole location right here. All right, now go ahead and you're going to gather all the rest of your bolts and you're going to start threading them in into all these ports here. Now, very important, these three locations will not receive any bolts from this pile. Okay, those are for the lockup module, which when we flip this thing back over, uh, we'll install that. That's where they thread into. Okay, just want to make sure that you have access to all of your bolt hole locations. Again, you have already torqued that bolt that's underneath the uh, main valve body casting. So you want to make sure that uh, you double and triple checked so that you're not in a position where you can't thread a bolt into one of the locations. I'm not aware of any uh, torque sequence you know, as far as tightening, but if you want, kind of just go in a spiral pattern of sorts. It's up to you. I'll probably have to use the uh, ratchet for that one. Hopefully I won't have to back out the rest of these bolts just to get that one in. All right. Like I said, I'm not twerking these to spec or anything, but if you were, you want to use 35 inch pounds. Okay, I'm going to flip everything over. Looks like I will need a new glove. <clears throat> 
So we have our lockup module and our solenoid. Here's the bolts for the module and here's the solenoid. Um, at this point, if you have the special tool to install your uh, rooster comb and detent assembly, Miller 6583, now is the time to employ it. So if you don't have the special tool and, uh, you know, I mean, you still need to put together the valve body, what you can do is just, you know, go ahead and position your uh, downshift lever. All right. And then you're going to get your rooster comb. And what you need to do is you need to make sure that you're able to line up your downshift or kick down lever. Your actuator arm on the rooster comb has to, you know, link in between the two spools here on the manual valve. All the while, you have your detent spring and ball held captive in this little cave here while you, um, you know, position and seat the rooster comb. So it's a whole bunch of things you got to do simultaneously. Uh, I showed you how to do it on the disassembly video. See if I could do it now. Like I said, you don't need to put the lockup valve or any of that stuff or lockup module in any of that stuff while you do this. I prefer to leave it out. Okay, didn't start off well. So like I said, this is kind of a pain. If you can get the tool, I definitely buy it. All right, so anyway, that's how you do it. No worries if you don't possess the tool, you can do it or make do without it. This is upside down. Okay, just make sure you expose the snap ring groove. Put your washer. And then come with your E-clip or snap ring. All right, now you're gonna go ahead and install your lockup module. Just line everything up. Your two tall bolts here and your shorter bolt here. Last but not least, your lockup solenoid. This solenoid came with the central valve body's valve body. 
assembly. I swapped it out for a new one. Um, they do test their, their electronics, but they won't replace them with new unless you ask. Again, hazards are working with gloves. Okay, so that's one 904 valve body um, almost fully assembled. Uh, the one thing you will have to do is swap over your uh, parking rod assembly from whatever other valve body to this one or reinstall it before you install the rooster comb. All right, hope this was helpful for you. Uh, at least it gives you an idea of what's involved when it comes to overhauling a valve body for these transmissions. The 727 is going to be, you know, for all intents and purposes, identical. Uh, these valve bodies are interchangeable to some extent, at least, you know, between uh, different vintages and other generations. So you'll just have to check the interchange rules, um, you know, for your specific application if you seek to swap over from one transmission to the other when it comes to valve bodies. All right, thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave them below. If there's anything else you want me to um, you know, do a video on as it relates to the 904 or 727, just leave it in the comments and I will prioritize it as soon as I can. Thank you again. Have a great rest of your day or evening.